I just like it because it's the it's the key second when the water's splashing up. It's not when he's in the water. It's not where he's in the air. It's when he's actually on the water. It's like it's almost like he's Jesus because he's on the water. It is. It's it's it's, it's like it's it's weird. It's a weird picture, but I just love it. Images have the power to transcend language, boundaries, and cultures. In sport too, images capture something that's very real, the truth, a reality, and a moment that is etched in sporting history. To capture that precise moment is tough enough, but to be able to do it when you've got a car whizzing past you at 300 kilometers per hour, that is something quite special. And that is what we are here to celebrate today at Man's Life. We're here to celebrate the men and women that spend every day of their lives capturing these iconic moments. And we're gonna take you through the lens with each of our photographers. The man we have with us today is a man who's been in motorsport photography for over three decades. He's captured through the lens the fastest men and the fastest machines in the world. And boy, has he done a great job of it as well. Mark Sutton, welcome to Through the Lens. I'd love to tap into your mind and understand everything that's gone on over the last 35 years, but also bring some of your best, most iconic images to life as well. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. Great to be here, yeah. Mark, I'm just, just back from Bahrain. So. Love it, love it. Can't wait for this F1 season to get going as well. Yeah. Just going to start yeah. by asking you how you got into motorsport photography and how you got into photography itself. Well, I was a big, my, my father used to take me to the tracks when I was a young boy. And then my brother Keith started taking pictures in, in around the 19, late 70s, early 80s. And um, I just took, took um, a real interest in that as well myself. And I helped him out in the dark room back at the office. And then from then really, um, my first ever race taking pictures was 83, 1983, in fact, wow. um, when Senna and Brundle crashed. I, I just went to another corner, really, not the first corner, out the back, and they crashed in front of me. But I didn't have a motor drive, so I literally <laughs> took the picture and then had to wind the film on or wind the camera on. So it was in black and white. And um, my first sort of break really came in 1992 when I started doing all the Grand Prix for a Japanese magazine. They, they wanted the film, physical film. Yeah. So we used to, we used to courier wow. those over courier those to Japan for them to produce a magazine like the, the week after. Look, you own now the largest independent motorsport picture agency in the world. It's, it's quite an accomplishment from back then in 82 sure. to where you've evolved to as well. How do you think motorsport photography is different to other sports photography, Mark? Well, it, it is similar. I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't deny it's all sports are very similar in, in what we take the pictures of. Obviously, with Formula One photography, we can move around. You know, you can be in the pits, the paddock. You could get the drivers arriving. Go, you can pretty much go anywhere around the track. Whereas the TV cameras are set in their positions, we can actually move. So, I guess Formula One and motorsport is much more the fact that you go and try and find the picture. I always think that you know the camera angles are the set camera angles. They don't really move. Obviously, we can go and find angles that they can never find. So, using the lights, using using the the, the actual circuit itself. Um, I, I think that's what it's more about. Yeah, and also every circuit's very different. You've talked about it as well. What's your favorite circuit to photograph, Mark? And what do you think is the most challenging circuit that you've been to to photograph? I, I, I still think Monaco, Monte Carlo and Monaco is, is, is my yeah. favorite track, only because it's not just got an amazing circuit. I mean, it's not a very good overtaking track, but in terms of the glamour, in terms of the actual backgrounds that you get, you know, whether it's the harbor, the yachts, you know, the parties going on in the background. People are very close to the track as well. And you are actually close to the track. You are literally, yeah. in some cases, you can almost touch the car when you're taking the pictures. Yeah. It's obviously a very complicated track because it's very up and down and you need yeah. to know where to go as a photographer. But um, yeah. I love it. I mean, it's just got the glamour. It's got the backgrounds. But for, for, for photos, it's one of the best, really. Yeah. So, Mark, actually, what we're going to do now, Mark, is go into yeah. your most iconic pictures, some of the moments that you've talked about already, and just sort of deep dive into them and bring them to life yeah. yet again. And let's start sure. with that iconic picture, the flying fin. This was at the 1993 Adelaide GP in Australia. Uh, it's probably your most famous photograph as well. I've used it in, a, in an interview with, with Mika Hakkinen to ask him how his name came about as well. So just talk us through that image. Talk us through where you were and how it came about. Well, it was Adelaide 1993, my second year in Formula One. Um, it's, it's a corner called Fisherman's Bend. It's, um, I was literally there with about 10 other photographers and just heard a screech of the brakes and I looked up and I didn't refocus or anything. I just kept my finger and he literally jumped over the curb through the air. Um, I wasn't actually ready for that picture. I was doing something else. I was doing a pan picture and it was at quite a slow shutter speed. It was 125th of a second. 
Um, I looked round at the other photographers and said, did you get that? And everyone sort of said, no, I'm not sure. And, and then overnight, we processed the, the, the film overnight in a lab that was nearby in, in Adelaide. This was in Australia. Yeah. And um, when the film came back the next morning, we sort of go through the light box and look at all the pictures, you know, with a big, like a reading glass. Yeah. And then my brother sort of shout, screamed out, you know, what's that? Wow, amazing. And everyone came over to look at the picture. And um, I went to show Mika and Mika said, wow, that's incredible. So after that photo, he then became the Flying Finn and he signed everything, the Flying Finn. So it would be Mika Hacken and the Flying Finn. So yeah, and that was used everywhere in magazines, publications, uh, all over the world, really. And that's that was a great accolade for me, you know, only my second year, pretty much in Formula One. Nobody else got it. But um, yeah, that's one of my fo- most famous pictures, I guess, the Flying Finn. And it, it, it still gets used. It's still it's still iconic, I guess, in, in, in terms of... Uh, motorsport photo- or Formula One photography. Yeah, it really was an iconic picture, one that we all remember as well. Moving from a two-time champion to a three-time champion and a seven-time champion, there's a moment that you captured of Edin Senna and Schumacher ahead of the San Marino Grand Prix, obviously the Grand Prix that Edin Senna lost his life at as well. Mm. Just tell us a little bit about that moment before the fatal incident, before they even started the Grand Prix. I mean, it was, it was obviously a completely horrible, sad weekend. So all the drivers go into this room and they talk through with the with the um, clerk of the course, they'll talk about yeah. what's going to happen in the race, obviously keeping behind the safety car if it's needed, things like this. You know, they talk about it in the driver's briefing, but it's a great opportunity to get all the drivers going to the going there. And also, so I, I used to follow them all down the paddock. And then, but in this case, um, Ayrton and um, Michael Schumacher came out and went down the pit lane, really to avoid all the cameras. And I just followed him down the, down, the, down the pit lane backwards. So I'm sort of shooting as I'm going backwards, trying not to trip over. But there's yeah. this really haunting picture that I took in 94, and it's just before the race. And you can see in their eyes, they, they just don't look like, well, certainly Ayrton, Ayrton said it doesn't look like he wants to race to me. Um, it, it, it's quite a haunting photo, and that's motor racing for you. It's Motor racing is dangerous at the end of the day. Yeah, but, and I think um, when you you go back to that 1994 race, uh, everyone talks about how Ayrton was uncomfortable but yeah. ahead of the race. He didn't necessarily have yeah. the, the best feeling, and they all said he had a gut feel that something mm. wasn't quite right. And That's I think right. that image of Schumacher yeah. and Senna yeah, yeah. Uh, captures that as well. Beautifully. Yeah, yeah. So let's move from that tragic incident in 1994 to a, a golden moment in more ways than one in 2017, the Canadian yeah. GP and Lewis Hamilton. You were obviously on top of Hamilton from what we can see in the image, yeah, but yeah. just tell us how you, you capture that image. Was it a bit of luck involved? Well, yeah. The, the, the light glowing off the trophy. It is a, another of your one in a million pictures, I think. I mean, it, it, it was just a, a, most, all the other, like four photographers we were shooting. We got special access to go above on this control yeah. tower, looking down, literally straight down onto the podium. And I was just shooting away. And as he came, as he was leaving, he lifted the trophy up to literally leave leave the podium and it hit the sunlight and it I called it the golden moment and only the trophy yeah. is lit just the, the maple leaf on the trophy is lit so I call it the golden moment I then obviously sent that back to my office um Lewis Hamilton actually picked it up himself and Mercedes did and Formula One did and they used it on their Instagram it's just something very completely different but it's all about as I said before it's being in the right place at the right time with the right exposure the right lens yeah. And yeah. just looking for something that's completely different and getting those different angles is what it's all about as well. Being in yeah. a different place than, than maybe yeah. the TV is or your, your other colleagues are. I think that's yeah. key to it as well. Yeah, you spoke about something a bit different. Something that is certainly a bit different was the 2018 belly flop from Daniel Ricciardo at Monaco. It, it was a win that he was waiting for for a long yeah. time. And the celebration yeah. in the pool. Just tell us a bit more about that because that was at the Red Bull station where they love to party it up, but where yeah. they celebrate after a big win as well. How much did that moment mean and where were you? How did that moment come about? I mean, it, it was it was just a great weekend for Daniel Ricciardo, to be honest. This one was um, taken at the energy station, like you say, it's become, they, they bring this, this this basically this barge, they bring this yeah. barge in from about 30 miles away and they float it into the harbour and it sat in the harbour itself and it's yeah. outside the paddock. So they can yeah. have parties every night without bringing the guests into the paddock. That's the yeah. whole idea of it. He'd gone to the press conference. I didn't know, but in the press conference, he spoke to Lewis. So, so Lewis said to him, why don't you do a belly flop? And I don't think he really knew what it was. He said, just stand on the edge and just flop in. And that's what he did. He just literally turned up and he literally just kept his hands out and flopped in. And my, my photo is like when he hits the water, it's Correct. just coming up. So it's like he's floating on water with the splash coming out. 
And then in the background is, like you say, the whole team, Christian Horner and obviously Adrian Newey and all the, the key people of the yeah. team. But it's just great. And you've got all the photographers there shooting from different angles. And then I went to Germany and um, said to Tender Daniel, um, what, what, what's this belly flop thing all about? Oh, Lewis said to me in the press conference and uh, I said, well, can you, can you just sign one to me personally? I've got these other ones for charity, which is great. I said, just sign one to me. So he signed it, belly flop, with a load of peas on it, which is, which is in my collection. Um, and that's great. And then um, those sort of moments, I mean, obviously there was a lot of photographers there. I just yeah. like it because it's the, it's the key second when the water's splashing up. It's not yeah. when he's in the water. It's not Correct. when he's in the air. It's yeah. when he's actually on the water. It's like it's almost like he's Jesus because he's on yeah. the water. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's it's it's, it's like yeah. it's it's weird. It's a weird picture, but I just love it. Um, it so he's been he's been it. called many things, Daniel Ricardo. I think he'd love the fact that he's now been called Jesus as well. Well, there you go. <laughs> but let's go to that final image that we've got with your collection: the Max Verstappen sparks from the German Grand Prix 2019. I mean, it's just. A beautiful image. It captures sort of the essence of Formula One, the raw speed and everything about it as well. Just tell us a bit more about this image. Well, it was it was, it was during qualifying. I mean, he didn't get pole position, but I think he was second in, in qualifying. But I was at turn one and there's, there's sort of a dip where the cars come in. So the cars come in, they dip. And as they come in, they spark. And I noticed on the lap before he created this small spark. But I thought, oh, on his qualifying lap, he's going to create a huge one. So I dropped the shutter speed to about 20th of a second. And that enhances the sparks because they sort of come towards you as they come off the car. So as he went into the corner, I just sort of motor drived it through. This big spark came out the back and I went back through and went, wow, that's incredible. So I sent that one back and then <clears throat> got that, you know, process that pretty much went everywhere. A lot of people yeah. used it on social media. And um, obviously Max won the race. So he came from second to win the race. And um, I was there on the pit wall doing the flag picture. So as you come past, you know, you get the shot yeah. of the flag of the crowd in the background. But as he went past, the fireworks went off in the background. I have no idea they're going to go off. And they're just literally in my frame. And I didn't even know I got it until I went back through the camera and had a look at the frames. Wow, that looks amazing. So sometimes you take a risk and they don't work. You know, sometimes you go to certain corners, it doesn't work. Sometimes you go to corners and it definitely works, you know. But like in Bahrain, I was in Bahrain last weekend for the, for the testing. We had two days where it wasn't really very good weather. It was nice in the morning. Yeah. And then one, one day we had a sandstorm come in and it was crazy, crazy weather. But we didn't we didn't really have a sunset and then luckily on the last day on the sunday we had a beautiful day it was lovely and clear blue sky all day and then we had this yeah. sunset and it was just amazing sunset and you've got this beautiful yeah. sunlight dipping behind the grandstand and it is literally a, a, a ball of flames you know and it's it's capturing that yeah. against the lights against the red sky it's, it's just gorgeous can't wait to see more of your images, your iconic images, and your picture of the year come through in of 2021. Course, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I think my pleasure. To relive some of these iconic moments as well through your lens has been quite special for us. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Life at 300 kilometers per hour doesn't get slow at any point, and it's been fantastic to have Mark Sutton talk us through life in the fast lane through his lens as well. We've got more fantastic photographers, iconic moments in sport coming your way right here on manslife.in. So head across to exactly that spot to get the best from the world of sport, entertainment, auto, and lifestyle.